Hey everybody, I'm Beeps Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today we have something big to discuss. Huge. Ginormous. Today I am bringing you a mini tutorial on all things humongous trousers, ginormous slacks, aka wide leg pants. So wide leg pants or wide leg trousers, whatever you want to call them, they are a trend. That's a fact. And they're going to be everywhere, at least for a little while. They might stick around a little bit longer than we want. Here's the thing, they are wearable. Even if they're not your style or your preference, they are wearable for pretty much everybody, but the key is getting the features right and finding the right pair for you. They aren't necessarily the easiest trend out there, but neither were skinny jeans. No trend is made with everybody in mind. But ultimately, no matter what and how much you try, certain trends are just not going to be very simpatico with your body or body type or even just your personal sense of style. For some people, it's just not something that's going to go with their lifestyle or their vibe in any way. I don't want this to come across as me pushing a trend out or suggesting it in any way, shape or form because I'm not necessarily. If it's something you like and you want to try, or it's something that looks really nice on you, or you feel confident in it, or you just gravitate towards them, then that's good. But so many trends just don't work well for other people, and I feel like it can be really frustrating to hear about it over and over when you see it all over the place and you just don't feel comfortable with that trend. It can feel really annoying and frustrating, so I just want to make it clear. I don't think that they're the perfect option for everyone and I don't think that everyone needs to try them at all. But for those of you who do want to try them, we have seen so many disastrous wide leg trousers on this channel that I felt obligated to make a video talking about how we can have success with this trend that is kind of permeating every store right now. So there are several different types of wide leg trousers, wide leg pants. I know pants mean something totally different in other places than it does here, but bear with me. Here, pants are pants. But the most common wide leg pant to find around here right now is going to be the pleated front man pant style. Very, very masculine, very, very old man almost in its vibe. Ultra high rise, a little bit of a drop crotch, slouchy, big man pants. That's what's like easiest to find right now. Though they're comfortable and can be really fun to wear, they're not necessarily the best style of wide leg pant for everyone because they have so much extra volume overall and also all that extra pleating throughout the front. So let's get into some of the other styles of wide leg pants as well because there's a massive difference between this and this. Huge difference. A huge reason huge. Why the Meg doesn't look good in these giant man pants is because she's short-waisted. She has, in fact, a double whammy. She has a short and boxy torso, meaning she lacks a well-defined waist and she's short-waisted, short torso. One might think, well, really huge pants would work well, but they don't because the rise ends up way too high on her. She does benefit from some volume in her bottoms, her slacks or skirts or things like that. When they have a little bit of volume to it, it's really, really nice and balancing for her because of those broader shoulders and because her legs can look really lanky and ultra skinny, a little too skinny for that boxy torso. So some degree of volume in her slacks is a great idea. The problem is that a lot of these wide leg pants, wide leg trousers, etc., they have such an ultra high rise that her pants end up greeting her boobs and it just ruins the effect. It looks awful. She needs to go for mid rise to low rise when it comes to these more voluminous trousers, but also just trousers in general for the Meg. She needs that mid rise or low rise. That would enable her torso to have a little breathing room, literally. It would give her torso room to show up. In fact, she would look really great in something that had a lower rise, a more flat front, and was also wide leg. Towards the end of the video, we're gonna get into the most wearable of wide leg trouser options out there and what sort of style or features you should look for in these trousers to match your style concerns or your proportions to some degree. We're not taking a super technical deep dive into exact body types and exact matches because there's just no such thing. We all have such a big combination of things that make 
a style look good or not on us. All of these things are just impossible to categorize solely on rectangle, pear, hourglass, etc. It's more than that. While that is a good starting point, there's so much more to it. So we're going to dive into some broad or general guidelines or places to start later in the video. But first, let's take a look at wide leg pants and who they were literally made for, which is Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and anybody who has similar body type to her, which is somebody with height. Anybody really who has some degree of height to their frame, who has a long torso and or who has a well-defined waist will find wide leg trousers to be infinitely easier to wear. If you have any one of those three features or any combination of them, these garments are going to be very wearable for you and it's not going to be a challenge to find a pair that you feel like looks pretty good on you and doesn't throw you out of whack in terms of your balance and proportions. So you have it easy, but for pretty much everybody else, the most important thing to remember in your pursuit of these pants is balance, which is determined by your proportions. If you are balanced in your proportions, you are still in the safe zone. But keep in mind, if you are apple shaped or have a bit of a tummy or you're super busty, or if you're like really petite and short, it's gonna complicate things some. Because wherever the pants sit on your waist, the eye is going to go there to some degree and it's going to chop your vertical line to an extent. There's also gonna be some degree of visual weight added and a little bit of a widening effect added there if you're not careful with your styling. Unless of course it's a monochrome outfit in which you can get away with it a little bit more, but still these pants, a lot of them do have a lot of pleats and extra stuff and extra fabric around the waistline area. So it's just gonna be adding more bulk. The more pleats there are, the more bulk there's gonna be. So if you're lacking length in general, meaning you're short, or you're lacking length in your torso, or you don't have a well-defined waist, pleats are not going to be slenderizing to your tummy area and these big pants that come up really high are going to shorten you overall. Now, it's a well-known trick that for petites, lengthening your leg line can lengthen your overall silhouette or make you appear taller. I do this all the time. When I have something that's coming up higher in its rise, it helps my legs and it helps me look a little bit longer in general, but it makes my upper body look like it's just boobs and that's not a good look either. So you wanna be careful with these ultra high rise items if you fall into any of these sorts of categories. Luckily, lower rise things are coming back at the same time. It's really best to offset the volume of these pants with some sort of slim fit top or cropped top. Of course, there are some exceptions to this. Like if you're dramatically pear-shaped, a little bit of volume in your top can be a good idea. Cropped tops can work really well. So can like open front blazers or cardigans. And if you're going for a sweater, you can get away with it better if it's cropped or French tucked. Just because if you don't, then you widen yourself so very much. You're just gonna look like a big blob of fabric everywhere and you'll kind of get lost in it and overwhelmed in it really fast because the pants are already a little bit overwhelming. So if you're not strategic about your top, you will disappear into a sea of clothing. Again, it's super important that they don't creep up to greet your boobs. Although they are slouchy, most are intended to still be fitted throughout the waist and buttocks. They are not meant to be saggy bottom pants. Another key, be sure to hem them to skim the ground. The dragging and puddling of the pants along the shoes and in the ground is great for editorial, meaning for photo shoots, for ads. It is not great in real life. It's extremely short-sighted. You will not keep your pants for very long if you do that. And you might notice most of the pictures modeling these clothes in catalogs, meaning this is how it's meant to be worn. The pants are not puddling up on the ground most of the time. You can still sh see the shoes. In literally all of these pictures shopping for wide leg pants, you can see the shoes. So in general, that is more editorial approach, which is unfortunate. Younger people who don't understand the difference between the ads that they see and what people actually wear like in real life, like even celebrities wearing these wide leg pants and merching them, your shoes should still be visible to some degree. Even if it's just the very bottom of your shoes, your pants should not, in all reality, puddle up on the floor like this, no matter what. If you are not very confident in this style of pant, but you'd still like to give it a try, or it's like 
all that's available in some stores, then go for darker colors at first until you're more comfortable with the style of pant. Because the darker color will make it not as much of a focal point. It won't dominate your overall look quite as strongly as if you get a bright color or a noisy pattern. And ultimately, it's all about finding the right amount of volume for you, for your body type and proportions, and for your comfortability. If you are petite, you need to be extra careful and conscious of the volume. The wider and more voluminous the slacks, the shorter you're going to look. And if that doesn't bother you at all, then go on, girl. You do your thing. It doesn't bother you. That's great. That's fine. It's easier. But if you do want to slenderize your figure or you want to elongate your figure or you just don't like shortening your vertical line, having something super voluminous that kind of squats down your figure overall, if you don't like that look, then just be careful with the volume. Simply picking a less voluminous pair of slacks will help. And also wearing boots or pumps, something with a heel will help counteract that wider pant. If you have a tummy or you're apple shaped or you lack a well-defined waist, you're more boxy, then go for flat front trousers. If you're also short-waisted like Megan, then be sure to stay away from those ultra high rise. Go for mid or lower rise. But if you have plenty of length, it's more just that you've got maybe a bit of weight in your stomach or you just don't have that well-defined waist, then the flat front will help a lot because the more pleats there are, the more visual weight there's going to be there and the more just volume and fabric right there in that area. And you don't necessarily want that if you are not super confident making that area look bigger in the first place. Texture, pattern, embellishments, buttons, pockets, all of those types of things are also gonna add visual weight. So for your tops, be sure to avoid too much noise. Unless your slacks are really, really plain and muted, you shouldn't have super intense slacks and a lot of intensity in your top, especially if it also has volume. You can't do it all all at once. Remember that outfit that Megan had that was everything, everywhere, all at once? Yeah. You run that risk with wide leg trousers. The more simple and sleek and slim fit your top is, the better balance you'll have with those big old trousers. And sadly, this is a trend that could be really great for a lot of people, except that they kind of need to be customized. At minimum, pretty much everybody's going to need to hem these to fit their length. But not everybody is able to or can't access it or has interest in hemming or tailoring their clothing. That's kind of what makes this trend not quite as accessible as it could be. So when shopping for these wide leg trousers, the biggest thing, the most top priority, first thing you need to think about when you pop a pair on is finding a pair that's fitted throughout the waist all the way down through the buttocks. Again, you don't want a saggy bottom. It's as simple as taking a look at the amount of volume. Does it look like you're wearing two giant skirts or does it look more successful to you? Do you like the way the volume in the leg looks on you or not? That's a simple yes or no. I think the hardest part is finding ones that will fit you good everywhere else. If you're not confident in the amount of volume that they have, then that particular style is just not for you. Try it in a different color or a different fit or from a different brand and see if you can get there to, till you find one that has the good amount of balance for the volume in the leg and the fit everywhere else. After that, just be sure to hem them to skim the ground, not drag. Now, as we talked about with tops, same goes for pants. All the embellishments, things like pockets and buttons, etc., are going to add some degree of visual weight and enhance the amount of like volume in that specific area. So if you're apple or pear shaped, you may feel more confident in trousers that do not have any pockets along the hips or lower belly visible in any way, shape, or form. And you may want to avoid things that have like buttons or belt loops or other sorts of embellishments in those areas. Personally, I like the sailor style pants a lot. I always have. In fact, the Meg even had a big success in a sailor pant a while back with a fitted sweater on top and it was really nice outfit, but I can't find many pictures of it. But anyway, the buttons on a lot of sailor pants are at a bit of an angle like this, which gives the illusion of a better waistline and it's really, really flattering. It creates a little bit of a widening effect towards your hips and a little bit of a slendering illusion towards your waistband. If you are comfortable in making a bit of a focal point out of your belly, your waistline, your hips, then sailor pants can be a really flattering option. 
And although they can be like a perfect match for somebody who's maybe a little more rectangular or inverted triangle who would really benefit from that sort of help with the illusion along to balance out their figure a little bit more or add a little bit more curve, I find these to be really flattering on anybody who's comfortable in them. Because again, trends are not made with every body type being comfortable in them as their priority. Trends don't care that some body types will not get along well with certain trends. It never has. It's annoying, but sometimes you just have to sit out and wait for a trend to pass. Because ultimately, if you're not comfortable in any given outfit, that's what really shows the most to people and is like the most noticeable, that that person's not very comfortable in their clothing. And in fact, sometimes I wonder if that's part of why the Meg looks so uncomfortable and awkward is because she's wearing stuff that's not comfortable on her because it's not the right thing. Let's take a look at some more specific examples here. So these corduroys are from Target and they are quite modest in their width and their flair. They're going to feel a little bit more wearable for a lot of people because they're not over dramatic and they're also in a darker color here. But they do have it in cream and I think that I could see these being really wearable for a lot of people. They are ultra high rise so you might want to be careful with that or mindful of that. Here we have the Fiona, which is flat front and again, not over dramatic, but it is a classic wide leg option here. I think it could be a really wearable choice for a lot of people as well. But compare that to these from Loft, which are hugely wide leg. Huge. Many would find these way too dramatic, similar to like really big chunky pleating, but these ones still have a more flat front and are dark in color. So if you want to try something with a really dramatic silhouette like this, then this darker color, flatter front might be the most wearable way to go about it. But then here we have a couple of pairs of sailor pants. Notice how one is more tapered in along until the knee and then flares while the other is more wide leg, but neither are as voluminous as these from Loft. If you're petite or just don't like the idea of wide leg pants, then try something more like these sailors or the corduroys that just have less fabric overall. You won't feel quite as overwhelmed as easily. Here we have a white pair that feels a lot more classic. It looks almost straight leg from the front, but they do have a wide leg cut. They're just not insane. And they don't flare out at the angle. They almost rein it back in just a tad right at the hemline. There are lots of options that don't overdo the volume for anybody who's not ready to go for it. These three gray wide leg trousers are very different. Let's compare. We have the flat front here with a more tapered wide leg, easiest to wear for anybody. Then we have pleated and full wide leg, slouchy fits, easier to wear the darker the color. Will work for most body types, but these pleats are going to add a little bit of extra like weight to your belly area. So if you don't want that or it would make you feel self-conscious, then skip it. Then we have a flat front but a full wide leg pair. Kind of a mix between these two. These are a great option if you are plus size. In finer patterns like this or darker colors, it might feel the most comfortable. But although these have a lot of room in the leg, they are lacking pleats aren't flaring out in a weird widening way. They're still very nice and a good fit. One thing to keep in mind too with pleats is if you have some weight in your lower belly or things like that, it can make the pleats pucker and they won't lay flat. So that's another thing to keep in mind in terms of wearability and comfort. If that doesn't bother you, then fine. That extra room might actually make it get a better fit for you or feel more comfortable for you. But if you don't like it looking like the pleats are being pulled apart, then just be careful with pleated pants if you carry weight in your lower belly. Here we have an extra button and pleats with a very wide leg. These are going to be a little harder to wear since they're very voluminous throughout the belly and leg. Everyone is different but it all comes down to comfort and for many of us these will run the risk of feeling frumpy unless you've got the height for balance and or are quite slender. Also them being in this brighter color, as you can see, it's a lot more noticeable um, any sort of puckering or pulling or pleating. It's a lot more noticeable the lighter colors you have. But these other green trousers still have the pleats, but they're not as exaggerated. And it's slightly less fabric overall in the leg. So they're a nice alternative. They also don't have additional like buttons or anything like that. 
and they're also not quite as high rise. These blue slacks from Topshop are the most dramatic of the three. They've got exaggerated pleats, a drop crotch, a ultra high rise, and a very voluminous leg. If you are tall and lean, you need not think twice. If you are not tall and lean, then you may feel like you're swimming in these or get lost or trip or feel like you've made yourself look ginormous. Notice again, we have yet to see a pair of pants on these models that is eating their feet. Let's compare this beige wonderland of wide leg trousers. These more taupe version here are ultra high rise, but they do have quieter pleats. I wouldn't necessarily recommend these for apple shapes or those who lack a well-defined waist though, because the band is so thick. So keeping in mind how big that actual waistband is, is an important factor in this equation as well. In the camel here, we have a relatively wearable standard pair that's on par with the most widely available wide leg pants. And they look to have just a really generally balanced approach. The flat front pair here is not too voluminous and it's a great option overall. While this favorite pant is a little bit high on the rise for those with shorter torso or some petites, but it's otherwise a really great design. The pleats are not exaggerated and the width is not overwhelming. So again, your personal comfort, your personal style and preferences are what's most important. But aside from that, the biggest risks you're gonna run into when trying on wide leg trousers are going to be feeling overwhelmed. These pants can easily feel overwhelming or literally actually overwhelm your figure visually. Second risk, boobs meet pants. This is not a good look for anybody in any style of pant, which as I've said is going to be common if you're short-waisted or petite, but it's also common if you're apple shaped. Because if you have to buy a couple sizes up to fit your waist, then it's going to have too much space, both in the rise and length, but also in the volume of the pants. Third risk, I feel fat in this. This is gonna happen anytime you have something with a lot more volume or you're trying a new silhouette. It often makes us just feel ginormous or makes us feel more wide. And since the look does involve some degree of volume in these areas, no matter what, you're not gonna get away from it completely. Fourth risk you'll run into is not knowing how to style them or what shoes to pair them with. If you're really not into trousers at all and this feels really foreign to you, then try wide leg jeans or flared or boot cut. They can still look really trendy and be more easy to find right now since these are Kind of everywhere but also if it just goes better with your style and your aesthetic overall then you'll feel more confident which is all that really matters best part though you'll never have to be in search for more volume it'll always be easy to find more volume if that's what you're into and that's what you want so all of the pants that I showed here as examples are going to be linked either in the products tab and or in the description box. Just remember, as with all trends, there's it kind of starts out with this one really dominant style. Of course, it's gonna feel really extreme and dramatic for us right now because we've been in skinny jean purgatory for a long time. But trying a new silhouette can be a really great way to freshen up your wardrobe. As time goes on, if these stick around, this trend lasts a little bit longer, then it'll be a lot easier to find things. I see lots more variety coming available come next season. So hang in there and don't lose hope. I think that they can look really, really nice when styled well and when they are the right style for your body type. I have shown successful wide leg trousers a lot on my channel. Angelina Jolie does them really well. Gwyneth Paltrow has had some success with them. Catherine the Princess of Wales wears them really, really well. Hopefully this helps you to find a pair that works well for you so you can join in or at least sample the trend because when we do try a trend and try something a little new and different, then it can help us to expand our wardrobe and what we feel comfortable in and boost our confidence and get us kind of excited or reinvigorated with our wardrobe. So I definitely think it's worth exploring the option for yourself, even if you're not immediately drawn to them on your own. That's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much. Please leave in the comments if you enjoyed this video and you'd like more mini tutorials like this, please let me know. Thank you so much for being here with me and I hope that you have a very happy day ahead. I'll see you next time. Bye.